Because this is an interesting turn of events, because if you're an investor interested in getting into this SNAP IPO, it's pretty hard to get any meetings with the execs or indeed get much more detail than is legally necessary. It is, and, and that will be one of the kind of linchpins for this offering going forward. They are a secretive company, and they're really young, and so you're going to need to see some visibility into the future. Uh, you'll recall right now they're on file confidentially, so there is some financial information filed with the SEC that some people have been able to to get their hands on. But until we see the actual S1, we won't have uh, that filed publicly. We won't have income statements, balance sheets, things like that. And this all kind of plays into this really close to the vest culture that uh, Evan Spiegel has maintained. And look, when you think about this offering, it's a social media company. The last one to go out was Twitter, and there was kind of an, an overhang because Twitter didn't necessarily lay out a huge strategy uh, when it went public, and that kind of came back uh, to bite them later. So you have to expect that when investors are considering whether to buy in at the IPO and hold on to this stock, they're going to need more uh, strategy-wise than what Evan is typically uh, willing to give out. And Sarah, this is something you've potentially been running up against for several years. I mean, Evan Spiegel himself wanting to only really speak on background to reporters and notably not really even divulging much to his own team. Not really. I mean, being an employee for Snapchat is kind of like being somebody on the outside of Snapchat in terms of what you get to know. Uh, the employees there don't get a heads up on what products people are working on. Uh, they don't get to use their phones at the New Year's party. There are little things that the offices are not in some kind of corporate campus like you see for Facebook and Google. They're scattered across Venice, California on the beach in various office buildings. There are no all-hands meetings uh, like it are just a staple of Silicon Valley startup culture here. And so a lot of people are just kind of in the dark within Snapchat about where the company's headed. Now, Evan Spiegel is going to have to tell investors on a roadshow not just about where the company's been, but where it's headed. Like Alex said, this is the time to explain the long-term vision for what Snap is and can be. And certainly, Alex, investors will need some soothing if they're not going to gain much control of the overall company. It looks as though we say Facebook copies Snap. Well, it looks like maybe Evan Spiegel is copying Mark Zuckerberg here. That's right. It's a lot of trust that's going to have to be put into Evan Spiegel. And, you know, they have been pitching, according to folks that we're talking to, Evan as this kind of visionary CEO. Trust him. He's won the millennial um, cohort over now. He can figure out what's going on in the future. And they're going to have have to with this kind of striated employee base uh, with all, no all hands meetings Evan is the guy who is in control he's the one who sees the full picture of what's going on and it's a big ask and he also is going to be the one they're gonna have to trust to control the information flow I mean we've already seen that come out in the IPO process itself this coming out party for the company the company scolding their bankers threatening to cut fees if things keep leaking so a lot of onus is going to be put on Evan and again after uh, Twitter has gone out uh, after you know some of these missteps with these other very uh, big founder led companies it's a big ask to ask of investors to do IPO might go well it's the first tech company in a long time but again the long-term investors that you really want to buy into these public offerings they are going to be the ones they're going to need to convince that this is going to be the company to buy into not for the IPO not for the next year but the next next five to ten years and to do that it's gonna have to be a bet on Spiegel and Sarah what are you hearing about how well you think the culture change will progress with Evan Spiegel do you think he really understands how much moral disclosure he will have to give being a public company I think he's still going to in, in the nature of how the company has run so far probably give as little information as he can because for Evan he thinks you know what what is it worth it to him to to expound more on what Snapchat's going to plan to do, given, uh, like you mentioned earlier, the threats from Facebook. Facebook has copied Snapchat over and over. Uh, the Instagram product, which Facebook owns, the Stories product that is named after Snapchat Stories, copied directly from Snapchat Stories, already has 150 million daily users, which is the same number of people that Snapchat gives for its global audience. Now, there is a difference between product secrecy and 
business vision secrecy, right? But even when we talk to, to people who know the kind of information staff's giving its investors, it's the bare minimum. They don't really let people into the fold unless they absolutely have to. Yeah. So when Spiegel, Spiegel has been meeting with bankers, uh, some other executives at the company like Imran Khan as well have been trying to spread the message as best they can, but until we see the S1, until we're in the roadshow, it's very unclear where this company will guide us for the long term.